I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, the Spirit of God is at the work, and I know He's doing something in your life. Praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, can we make requests for our daily bread? Join me, release your faith in agreement with me right now. And say, Father, I demand for my daily bread. It's coming to me now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, when we talk about daily bread, remember it's not only food. It's not only physical provisions. Healing is part of the daily bread. Maybe I should do a quick rundown. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Psalm 103. Psalm 103. I think this is going to be of help to someone. It says, bless the Lord, verse 2, now Psalm 103 and verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Now, these benefits are the same thing Jesus referred to as daily bread. Because David said it, that he daily loads us with benefits. He daily loads us with benefits. So when Jesus came and said, ask for your daily bread, he was referring to your daily benefits. Is that, is that okay? So now he says, number one, forgiveness of iniquity is a benefit. It's a daily bread. I'm sharing this with you so you would not forget. Forgiveness of iniquity is daily. Healing of your diseases. So if there's any disease in your body right now, as you ask for your daily bread, you're asking for healing. And you must release your faith to be healed. So you can actually do what you couldn't do before immediately after asking. Because when we ask, we receive. Praise God. Now he says, healing of, our, of diseases. The redemption of our life from destruction. You know what that means? I'm not going to die today. Praise God. Oh, no, no. Nothing can destroy your life. He says he redeems present continuous tense. He redeems your life from destruction. He is not referring to the work that Jesus did on the cross alone. He's referring to the one that is done every day. There is a covenant of redemption every day. So, hey, what if the vehicle I enter have an accident and everybody dies? It's never going to be your portion. He will redeem your life from destruction. He's done it already today. And he's going to do it again tomorrow. Are you hearing me? No, no, no. You are not going to end in disaster. You are not going to end in that fire. No, clear those thoughts from your mind. As a benefit today when I ask for my daily bread, he redeems my life from destruction. So the structure is not going to come to me today. Not today. Praise God. Not today. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Not today. Praise God. Mm. He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy. See, and that's his love walking inside you. And it's new every day. He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy. He satisfies your mouth with good things. Glory. He fills your mind. Oh, King James said, He fills your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Hallelujah. I'm getting younger today. It's a daily bread. Lord, I receive my daily bread today. I'm getting younger today. Why? Because he fills my mouth with good things. I speak truth all the time. Because, hey, when you tell lies and keep telling lies, you'll be getting old. It's as simple as that. Because your mouth is connected to your life and even your aging. Speak the truth and you'll be looking fresh. Because <laughs> whenever you speak the truth, you send the right blood circulation through your whole body. That's another day's talk. Praise God. But I brought that because when we were making requests for our daily bread. 
I saw someone with, with a heart condition, something to do with actually your chest area. There's a tightness you feel in your chest. So while we're praying, oh God, I receive my daily bread today. The Lord gave me that flash. And, and I just wanted to point out to you that you have been healed. The tightness of your chest is gone. You, you can breathe in now and breathe out. You can just take walks around and you notice that you are free. Praise God. You are healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now let's continue with our John chapter 15 and verse 16. I'm not done with what the Lord wants us to see in this scripture. He says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Now, let's go to verse 7 and match these two scriptures. Verse 7 says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, it says, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Now, this scripture, I took you to the old King James. So I said, you shall ask. And remember, I told you, it's not, uh, he's not saying you can ask. He's telling you what's going to happen. And I explained that to you. If you, if you missed that broadcast, go watch last week's broadcast. Just, just go watch it. It'll, it'll, it'll really help you. So um, he said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask. It's a prophecy. You shall ask. Now here in verse 16, it says, I have appointed you that you should bear fruit. Now that's the purpose, that you should bear fruit, right? And that your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. The focus here is not the asking, if you will understand me. The focus here is the bearing fruit. Verse 7 tells us how that fruit comes. We abide in him and we let his words abide in us. And when we allow that to happen in us, this is what happens. Now, we find ourselves in a situation where we have to ask. And then we begin to ask in his name. And he would do it for us. Now, here in verse 16, it says, We are appointed to have fruits that remain. How did those fruits come about? By asking. By asking. And how is the fruit sustained? By asking. By asking. You see that now? Now, he, the fruit, every manifestation of our lives is that fruit. I told you this last week. Everything they see in your life, you are seeing the fruit of God in it. How did you get that car? God gave it to me. Wow, how did God give you? And by the time you're done, God loves you. How did you get the house? How are you doing this? How are you doing that? And, and one looks at your life. What's going on? You're bearing fruits. You're bearing fruits. You know, we have thought the fruit is patience. You know, you say, ah, my brother, he has the gift of patience. He has the, the fruit of patience really at work in his life. Who, if you insult that, right, he will not say anything to you. Man, you have mastered the game. No, no, sir. No, sir. No, that's not the fruit. But you see, I ain't a I We have based our minds trying to, you know, that's what I told you. See, sometimes we'll make a statement. People just run with the statement without understanding the depth of why we summarize the whole depth of truth in a statement. So I said, we don't live our lives to conform to scriptures. We live our lives by the power of the Holy Spirit and then scriptures come alive in us. So someone is trying to live his life so that people think he's gentle, so that people think he has patience, so that people think he has self-control, so that people, that's what he's struggling to do. 
Now, he ends up getting people to think he is like that. And he thinks he's bearing fruit. But then there is no fruit in his life. So you see someone who is so patient, who is so gentle, he cannot order fire. But nobody really wants to be like him. Nobody sees. Now, you know, sometimes we can say, eh, even if I don't have all these earthly things, at least I know I have peace of mind. I have eternal life. But you see, that your peace will soon be disrupted. When it's time to pay school fees and you cannot pay the school fees, you will look for that peace. You will not find it. No, see, I, I know my mates, they are stealing. They are doing all the wrong things. That's how they are getting money. Hmm. Me, I cannot steal, but I know one thing God has given me is peace of mind. The little I have, I have peace of mind with it. Eh, you will soon have trouble in your mind. I'm telling you the truth. Because that's not the fruit. The fruit is what you produce by faith. You see, the way one is stealing is because that's all he can do. That's what he can see. Now, you believe in God, right? Yes, I believe in God. Okay, so produce your own. Now, the one I produce is the display of God's love in my life. Now, that's why someone will look at me and say, I understand why you don't steal. Because anything you pray for, you get it. You see that now? Now, what are we doing? We're bearing witness to his truth. And these things are done by the power that is at work in us, not because we are praying mountains, not because we, we, we have, no, simple faith. You hear from him because, why would you hear from him? Because you abide in him. You have trained yourself to abide in him. That's the training you give to yourself. Now, in that training of abiding in Him, you now realize patience is at work in you. Gentle, you're gentle. There is peace in your heart. You find out it's so easy to stay, you know, what they call long suffering. It's so easy. You begin to find all those things at work in your life. But now they are all working in your life to produce something that is not all this love, all this peace, joy, gentleness, goodness, all these things are describing what love is. Are you getting me? Now, while you are about to bud, or while you are about to release that fruit, all these things begin to work in you. They all work in you by the power of the Holy Spirit, not you trying to, mm, I talked too much yesterday. I, 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 I. Today, I will hold myself not to talk too much. I must, I must be gentle. I must be gentle. I must be, oh, gentleness is working in me. Gentle, that's not how it works. How does it work? Holy Spirit. I abide in you. I abide. I let your word abide. Now, so something happens, and then you want to realize, no, 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 I abide. He's not told me what to say. Lord, how do I react to this situation? What are you doing? That, that's your part. That's your part. You remember, I did not choose him. He chose me. Then he ordained me to bear fruit. He says, if I abide in him and his word abide in me. Okay, now, so I've not heard him tell me what to do in this situation, so I cannot do anything. Lord, what would you have me do? Now, you know, the early stage, you will not say anything. So, like, if he doesn't say anything, I do nothing. Now, guess what the end result is going to be? Everybody expected you to react. But you didn't react. What happened? 
You mean you just let that guy go like that? The Lord did not tell me anything to do. You are changing. You are becoming a gentle person. You see, you, can you see now? Now, it is people that will look at this. You're becoming a gentle person. But you, not you, and I'm, I'll be gentle. I'll be gentle. In Jesus' name. I, I, no, no, no. You are just abiding in Him. But you have not bought fruit yet. Now, this is the point I'm driving at. You've not brought out the fruit. The fruit hasn't come yet. The fruit then will be okay. So, someone stole from you, right? And the person is gone. So, what are you going to do? The Lord has not told me what to do yet. Mm. <laughs> ah, yeah, if it's me, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're just dolly. You know, people, you're just dolly. If it is me, ah, yeah, I'll turn this whole country upside down. I must find that too. No. Then you now realize, Lord, this person took what is mine. Lord, I ask that you replace that. Is it because he did not permit you to do anything otherwise? But you need that thing that was stolen. I say, Lord, I ask for this. Thing. Then the Holy Spirit will come. I am they predicting. See, the reason a lot of believers have not grown or are not growing is because they don't have this fellowship. They don't have that. This is your part. Shut the doors. Stay in. I have nowhere to go to but him. Then you begin to learn uncommon wisdom. That's when you begin to. Now, now you see, Lord, I, I asked for this thing that was stolen. To be restored to me. You have asked. Then sometimes you just hear the Holy Spirit say, Son, I want you to release that thing that was stolen as a seed. I said, huh? How? How can I release something that was stolen as a seed? He said, yeah. Because Jesus said, Give to everyone that asks you, ask from you. And he, from him who takes away your goods, don't ask him back. But really, my stuff was taken away. Jesus said, I should not ask it. I should not get it back. Okay? Why well, would Jesus say? Now, this is the Holy Spirit beginning to teach you now. Praise God. You remember in John chapter 15 and verse 3, he says, Ye are clean to the words that I have spoken unto you. Amplified version says, The teachings that I discuss with you. Now, I'm telling you how it works. So the Lord, now you 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 got to that place where someone has stolen from you. Ah, ah! You can go to the police. You can do all those stuff. I know the process that's going to go. But then you say, Lord, what would you have me do? And then He's not saying anything to you. Ah, I'm going to fast tomorrow. Lord, what should I do? He's not saying anything. But I need this thing that was stolen. Oh well, Lord. I need this thing back. Then the Holy Spirit comes and begins to do the teachings. Release that thing as a seed. I'm telling you what has happened to me. Release that thing as a seed. And then you're confused because you've never heard that before. Like, Lord, tell me more. Aha! The teachings that I discuss with you. And he begins to tell you all the explanation, seed time and harvest. So, Wait, so something that was stolen, I can turn it to you. Yes, you can. Oh, okay. Lord, I release that money. I release that thing as a seed into whoever's life. It is. And Lord, I look up to you for my harvest. And hey, the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Now, you just had a witness in your heart that you've done it right. You will know. You will know. Because now, the peace, you, you are just going to be, wow. Now, you realize, I never knew this thing before. Man, I can never be disadvantaged. How? How can I? Now, nobody taught you this thing. You're, you're having fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And then someone is looking at you like, so what are you going to do? No, nothing. So what? No, leave it. Leave it. 
What if they catch the person? I've already released it as a seed. Huh? Man, you're gentle. No. I've never seen this time before. Now, the next thing, that thing comes to you in multiple folds. Now, when it comes, because you ask the Father, when that thing comes, what happens? You have just, that's the fruits you have just bought. And you say, ah, come, 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 come. Was it not one of that thing? He said, yeah. How come you have to? The Lord gave it to me. You see that in the store? That's why Jesus said, you see, now you are being a witness. Praise God. Jesus said, give to everyone that asks of you. And from him who takes away your good, don't ask him back. Ah. Wow. Now the understanding of that scripture or that statement of Jesus have come alive. Thank you, Holy Spirit. My time is up. Father, I pray that these things are seen in the lives of everyone listening to me. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.